rtcifm.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. We're going to have audio and video soon on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's in the studio. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good morning, Tom. Nice to have you back with us. Good to be here, sir. All right. We're going to talk with Brian Johnson, Fulton County Community Foundation. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Well, I'm kind of confused. I think earlier in the week it was winter, <laughs> spring, <laughs> summer. I haven't seen any leaves falling off the trees. Yeah, March is supposed to go out like yeah. a lamb, right? Okay. Comes in like a lamb yeah. and out like yeah. a lamb, and it has not done yeah. that yet, so no. I'm still waiting. Well, we'll we'll be looking forward to it, because I think they're saying That's some exactly sun right. and nice weather That's right. tomorrow, and so maybe this is our April Fool's. Probably is. Something along those lines. Yeah, Manitowoc lines, Mike so. uh, kind of let us down. So Did he? What okay. are you going to do? Uh, it's can only depend on so much from those guys. <laughs> That's right. For those rodents, <laughs> yeah. right? So, well, hey, we got a lot of things going on at the Community Foundation. As always. Um, a couple things. Of course, if you are listening to this live or watching it on RTC in the next couple of days, um, I want to remind folks about the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle grant application. Um, the deadline for that application is April 2nd. Um, that is a group of women that formed the group in 2010. That's next Monday, too, by the it's way. It's next Monday. Right. So, um, they pool their funds, use half of them to create an endowment. It's been neat to see how that endowment has grown um, over $40,000 in that endowment. So it's starting to make some considerable grants um, to this project, but then they also have um, part of their dues that goes to annual projects. So we're looking for grant applications for that. It's a pretty simple application. Um, and if you have questions or you're interested in finding out what kind of projects may be interested in that, um, we'd love to talk to you. The application is actually available on our website, nicf.org. Okay. Um, in general, that group funds projects from the few hundred dollar to $2,000, $2,500 sometimes, but um, looking for projects that help improve the quality of life in Fulton County as, as what we do at the foundation. Um, there's not really a restriction on specific areas of interest or geographic areas, but something that helps helps benefit folks in Fulton County. So um, again, Monday, April 2nd, which is next Monday coming up, um, is the deadline for that. So if folks have questions, it's not a difficult application to fill out. So encourage anybody that may have an idea for a project, even if it's just an idea, if you want to give us a shout and say, hey, I have this idea, is this something that may qualify for that? So um, again, that application, nicf.org, and you can click on the Fulton County page and look at the grants, and that application is there. So Okay. Another application, a little bit more time on this, Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund. Um, that application is also available on nicf.org. Um, the deadline for that is May 7th, so folks have a little bit more time for that project. Um, but that fund has up to $2,500 available to grant out of it. Um, that is specifically for projects that benefit Kiwana and Union Township. Um, that's a, a fund that has had that specific mission and, and wonderful to see some of the things that have come out from that fund. So um, I'd encourage folks, if you, if you have an idea for a project and you think one of those applications may fit, um, we'd love to see an application from that. Excellent. Of course, all of our grant applications, our community support and impact grant applications are on our website as well. With those, we have no deadline. So if somebody is looking at a project and you think it may fit for that, we'd love to see an application for that. But um, just, just a reminder, since it's coming up, the Women's Giving Circle, April 2nd. So that's about five days folks right. have to, to get that out. And so kind of an exciting time when we can see some of those grants. We we're looking back um, last year, our community support grants, um, we were able to give out over $186,000 in community support it's and terrific. impact grants. So, um, we, looking back, um, of course, we've been doing a series of 25th anniversary um, focus shows, and we'll get to that here in a minute, but looking back, I remember when I started with the foundation, we were excited when we could get to that fifty or $70,000 <laughs> a year, and now we're up to um, close to 200000 that wow. we can give away in grants, and it's just exciting to see that. Of course, part of that was a successful, the most recent Lilly sure. match that we had that um, that has been successful, but it's, it's exciting to see how that has grown Year just keeps after growing, year. doesn't it? Does. That's great. And it will continue to grow. Right. And so um, that's the exciting part about it. So 
Well, kind of leading into our um, our topic, um, 25th anniversary, um, one thing that the foundation has been able to help with around the community is some different community centers. Um, we kind of look at where are our gathering places in the community. Um, I know before we were on the air, we were talking about how schools used to be that when, when we had the, the smaller community schools. Um, those oftentimes were those gathering places. Um, but um, recently, community centers have kind of taken that role um, in each of our communities. So thinking a little bit about that, I just wanted to run through some of the community centers that we okay. have in our community. A lot some, more than uh, what meets the eye. Yeah, we some, were talking about some, it before we went on. Some folks may not realize that they're there or they're so commonplace that you say, oh yeah, I, I remember that. So um, just a few that we've been able to help with. Of course, um, during the early Lily granting, when they were helping community foundations get going, they said, we want you to find some projects that we can help support financially. Um, and so the town of Lighters Ford um, had a school that was in disrepair, starting to fall down, really becoming a safety concern. And so a group from the Abenabi Township Improvement Committee got together, um, worked with the local United Methodist Church in Lighters Ford, and applied for and were awarded um, actually two grants, one to help um, tear down the school, okay. get that um, taken care of so that something good could go in there. And then their vision was to help construct a community center, and they were able to do that. So now the um, Abenabi Township Community Center sits at the site of the former school. Of course, there's also a library branch right. in that area, the fire station, um, kind of in downtown Abenabi. Um it's neat to see how a group of local citizens said, hey, we need something like this in our community. So now this serves as a gathering place um, for community events, families, reunions, um, the voting location for um, Abenabi Township. And it's neat to see how that building that the school was getting to the point of being a public safety concern is now a used facility and can now benefit um, really all the buildings up and down that that area. Um, so that group has, has worked hard on that and done a good job of getting that project going and keeping that building. I know recently they made some renovations there and it's, it's great to see that building being used um, by so much in that community. Exactly. Um, the next one, Richland Township Community Building. This is one that people may not necessarily think of right off the top of their heads as a community building, but um, this was actually constructed um, through a partnership with the Richland Township um, Community Association. Of course, the school was was torn down, and originally the, the idea was to build a community building in its place, um, but a partnership developed between the Richland Township Community Association and the Fulton County Historical Society. So now if you go out to the museum, the north part of that, you'll see the Richland Township Community Building um, sign on there, and they were able to, to construct that, and it's been a great partnership. The museum has it um, for events. I know um, this last weekend they had a craft show. I drive mm -hmm. by that building every day, and there's not often when the parking lot isn't, isn't have a number of cars in it, and Saturday it was full. So, um, But it also allows um, the Richland center school history to be displayed um, in another partnership with the museum so if you've not been in that portion of the the museum the the community center you'll walk around and you'll see all the class photos and some of the memorabilia and some of the um, things that came from the school and kind of keeps that history sure. of that alive so um it's not not often where there's a weekend where there's not something going on um, there. I know the the school has their reunions there. The township meetings are held there, um, and a number of groups use that use that meeting room as a resource to be able to hold community events. We've held foundation events there. Um, it's it's a great resource. It's very easily accessible. We've had a number of events where we've had folks coming from out of town and they say, well, how do I get there? And you say, get on 31 and okay. turn off when you see the museum. Right. It's, it's a great resource for our community. So um, kind of exciting to see that. And then another one that happened, of course, the, that 
building was built in 2007, finished up in 2008 um, as part of a part of a grant for that. Um, another big one that we have in our community is the Akron Community Center. And it's kind of interesting as we look back at the history of this. Of course, the building was actually constructed in 2010 um, and opened. It was really spearheaded by the Akron Lions Club. But if you look back um, to the early 70s, a gentleman by the name of Howard Utter, which his family are the ones that are involved with Pike Lumber Company, he said, you know what, we really need some sort of community center. And so that had been on the list of things for the Akron community to be able to have at some point. And, and so the Lions Club got involved with this, also the Akron Revitalization Committee. Um, they've done a number of things to help um, revive some of the okay. old buildings, things like the RTC building. They, they worked on um, the facilitation of that, some different projects throughout the community, really to make Akron a a self-sufficient community, if you will. And a community building was kind of their their last piece that they said, this this is the big piece that we want to have involved in this. So they were able to do a lot of, of things throughout the community, spent about 10 years on the efforts of fundraising, planning. Um, and if you've been in the Akron Community Center, it's really a wonderful facility. It is a beautiful facility. They have space, I know, anywhere from small gatherings, 10, 15 folks to a meeting room. The Lions Club meets there, different groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, the legislative senior, breakfast, legislative have, been there, breakfast sure. have been there. The seniors have a meal there regularly. You, so you have anywhere from a small meeting room that you can fit 10 people in up to a banquet room that you can fit almost 300 people at tables or over 400 at chairs. Um, and it's really been a great asset. It's it's fun for me to be in that building the first time somebody walks in because they say, oh, well, Akron, the community <laughs> center, what's it going to be like? And they walk in and they see this building that is so nice that I know they've had a number of weddings there that serves as as a place for wedding receptions or actually the ceremony sure. itself. It's it's such a nice facility and, and they've done a good job and and so so Howard's vision from the seventies has come to place and has really been a good asset for the community. And of course it's it's right next to the park. So families right. having a reunion can just run across and play on the playgrounds at, at Pike Memorial Park and it's just a a great fit for that community and, and it's been a good asset for them so and then another one that was constructed um, was the Fulton Community mm -hmm. Building of course that's in the town of Fulton um, and that had been a vision of the Fulton Improvement Committee for a number of years and they were actually able to complete the building in 2012 um, and it's interesting how each of these communities the building fits what they need exactly so some interesting thing about the fulton community building is they do have a what they call a multi-purpose room which is a very nicely furnished gym that has also held um you mentioned the legislative sure. breakfast that was sure. another side it of was. a legislative breakfast right um they host community events weddings receptions family reunions um a community-wide garage sale is kind of a neat idea that's a a very popular thing lately um they also with the athletic facilities um they have a youth basketball league that they've been able to start and and host their um i know the building has been a good resource for the cast and um, athletic programs. They have a lot of practices. I was down there a couple weeks ago and I met a Caston school bus coming to the facility okay. so that they could they could practice. I think this was maybe the softball team coming up to practice and run drills. Um, but it's been a wonderful resource for that community. And again, it's built um, next to a park so that they can enjoy. If, if a family's having a family reunion, they can go inside and have a meal and do activities there and run across to the park. And um, it's just a great partnership there. So kind of neat to see how that building fits. And another neat thing is they were actually able to construct it so that it, is, it qualifies for an emergency shelter. So if we would, if we would have another unfortunate um, community-wide disaster, um, this facility can be used for that as well. So it really is a multi-purpose. It, it fits so many needs um, for the community of Fulton and, and a good gathering place. Um, 
So kind of exciting to see that. Um, a couple others that we weren't didn't necessarily help with construction, but have helped with renovations. Um, the Talma Community Building. Okay. That's one that, um, it's, Talma is kind of on the edge of Fulton County, but it is in Fulton County, and we've been able to help with some renovations there. That's, that is the community gathering place in Talma, um, and so we've been able to help with some renovations. Um, the Lions Club there had spearheaded um, a number of things, and so we've been able to help with renovations there. Also in Grass Creek. The Grass Creek Depot, um, there's been some renovations there that has turned that into a community gathering space. Um, again, really spearheaded by the Lions Club in that community. And so they use that as a meeting space, but um, is open to community events. And again, right next to the park, um, they've been able to make some improvements. So not only the community building there, but also some extra seating for um the pavilions that they have on the edge of the park make some improvements in the playground area and really turn that into a community gathering space Excellent. Um, for Talma. Um, and also the Fulton, um, Fulton County Community Center, you may think of that as the Council on Aging or the okay. Senior Center. Right. Um, it's, right here in Rochester. It's right here in Rochester. Okay. It's, it's one that has received some grants as well for some kitchen upgrades. That One of the things that they do every day is is host the community meals. Um, we were able to help with some kitchen renovations for that facility. Um, but I don't know the last time I was in there that something wasn't going on in there, whether busy it be place. a card game or bingo busy, busy or a meal um, or just folks showing up to right. maybe have a conversation with a friend or just to have some company. So um, it, it's wonderful to see how these community centers have really been able to bring together people and and fill a need. Um, a lot of times we look at each other and say, where are we going to have this event? Well, we have these wonderful community right. centers in each of these communities that we can we can use as a resource and, and become those gathering places where people see their neighbors, see their friends, get information, learn about things in the community. And so um, it's been exciting as we look over the past um, 25 years. We, we looked at the numbers. and We spent over a quarter of a million dollars in helping renovations for these community centers. So um, to be able to fill these needs that um, communities have and, and be able to provide it in a way that's beneficial for the community has been great to see how those have happened. So um, kind of exciting when we look back at that past 25 years. 25 and we say, years. Well, yeah, we did do that. Yeah, we did do this, <laughs> and right. we did do that, and we forgot about that. It's just so commonplace that we think, oh, we've had this. Well, where did it come from? And it came from an idea. True. It came from a group of people that said, hey, you know what? We need this in our Let's community. Let's get it done. It came from the Howard Utters and the folks in Fulton right. and and those people that said, hey, these would be a really good thing for our community. We think we can do this, and they've shown that they can. Yes, we've they been did. We've been pleased to be able to support those projects in the way that, that we've been able to. So I'm kind of exciting as we look back and say, hey, this is something that we can be proud of in our community. We've got things that not everybody has. That's so, right. Exciting. So. Well, just a reminder, um, of course, the grant applications, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Monday. Monday, April 2nd. Get those applications in. Um, Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund, May 7th. Um, then our Community Supporter Impact Grants. We're always open for ideas for those. Um, all those can be found at nicf.org. You can find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office, 715 Main Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about how to, the ideas you have for Fulton County to make it a better place. Right. quickly as we look ahead now, we still have the grants that are available uh, just on a, uh, not necessarily a time cycle, but yes. whenever yeah. you need it. Yep, those are those are available. We, we try and review those on a quarterly basis, but if somebody comes in and says, hey, I have a, a need that maybe before the committee meets we can sometimes pull that group together and, and get an answer on that but um, really our goal is to be able to help organizations at the time that they need it not make them work on our timeline support their projects on the timelines that work for them so yeah those even though the women's giving circle and union township have deadlines our community support and impact grants are available year round and we'd love to see okay. projects for those Brian Johnson, keep up the good work for Fulton County, okay? Thank you, Tom. All right.